Welcome back to another episode of Keg and Fishing. Uh, we won't be doing any fishing in this video, just to preface it, but I will be going in more detail over the Sea Dew Fish Pro. In my last video, uh, I picked it up and I immediately went to the water. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, check it out. I'll link it up here. So this machine has a lot of power. Uh, more power than I'm used to on any craft that I currently have. I have the solo skiff, which is a six horsepower, and I have the aluminum boat, which is an express 18 foot semi V. I think it's the Bayou edition, and it has a 90 Yamaha on it. This little ski has 170 horsepower, and you feel it every little bit. You tap the throttle, and it wants to just go. But what makes this so unique to me is that it's kind of a an all-around just fishing vessel. Um, it can cut through chop, which here is pretty windy most of the time. There's not many days where you get very calm, calm water. And so having this deep V on the front will allow me to be able to get out when those conditions aren't perfect, but at least be able to go out and fish. Uh, also, just for the enjoyment factor, I had an absolute blast riding this on the last video and it's just because it just cuts through the water and it just goes. It's, on, it's a motorcycle on the water. Basically, that's what it is. Um, so I guess I'll just start with the front. The front, nothing really crazy up here. Basically a jet ski. Um, but I will start with the anchor. So right here, I have a little anchor holder. Um, not the craziest heaviest anchor but it'll do the job and also inside there's this little mesh pouch that holds all of my anchor rope so that's nice so if I have any leftover rope or when I'm done and I store it it's all conveniently held in this little section and I'm not worried about it the rope coming out and getting sucked down under into the impeller because every PWC owner's worst nightmare is to have something that goes up into the impeller and lodges and at that point, you're dead in the water. So yeah, um, I'll go ahead and get on the ski and we will look at from the rider's perspective. All right, so looking from the back of the ski, you have the back seat, your main seat. I have to say one of my favorite things about this sea -Doo, I keep wanting to say jet ski, is this hatch. So I pull this and the entire compartment lifts to allow for a monster size storage area. So I have little holders down here just for little things. I've got a bigger wider compartment. That's where I keep my uh, fish finder or chart plotter, whatever you want to call it. I also have some paperwork in here just for now because I don't have my tags in yet, but these are my temporary tags for the trailer and the sea -Doo. So, and then I also have all this giant storage space. It doesn't look that big on camera, but it really is a pretty massive area. The other thing is safety equipment. So I have my fire extinguisher here. Um, some people put flares, other things like that, uh, an EPIRB, depending on the size. Uh, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with that yet, but I'll figure something out for it because it's a nice little spot to yeah, hold something. So there's one look with the hatch open and how it extends all the way up with the handlebars and everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and close this guy back down. It just locks into place like that. All right, so back at the dash, of course, I have my Garmin Fish Finder. It's a 72 UHD, so it does not have the side view, but it does have the down view and all the chart plotter features on it. All right, of course, I have my screen. You guys saw that in the last video. But, so besides opening the big hatch, I can open this hatch, and inside there's a waterproof phone holder with a USB outlet, so you can always have your phone charged. And if you're playing music and doing all that out on the water, you don't have to worry about your phone going dead. So that's really nice. All right, getting back to the steering column. Um, it does have... A tiltable steering wheel you pull this lever here and you can tilt it up or down um, I just found that from the factory ride height it was pretty comfortable next up we're gonna take our key 
and you put it in the little just it's almost like a ram ball mount clip-in holder so at that point it doesn't power anything on you just tap the start stop really quick and it will power your screen on it powers the stereo and at this point powers the Garmin uh, one of my questions to begin with was how long will it stay on in standby mode like this and so the great part is that I found with the key in it will stay on with the fish pro it actually has a secondary battery and so that allows for a starter battery and then your accessory battery and of course there's an alternator in here that will charge your starter and accessory battery so you're good to go so on the screen you guys can see on the left you can set that it has your fuel gauge a compass and it has your distance to empty which is pretty cool to know um, the tank isn't all the way full and it's showing 97 we'll get to those stats and how it calculates that in a minute but of course you have miles per hour on the left rpm on the right um, and it shows down at the bottom your phone charging status and your signal so i actually plugged my phone in to this because it has some special features i have not played with yet so on the steering wheel back over here steering wheel yoke handlebars whatever you want to call it you have a set of buttons set of buttons so these on the left side up and down uh, operates your tilt and trim um, the right is for your cruise mode and your left is your just general mode which would be your speed or um, racing mode or not it's not racing on here but it would be your eco mode normal or sport mode that's what those would be and over here this uh, d-pad over on the right side of the handlebars works the right side of the screen so uh, once I hit OK button in the center, it will pull up launch, stats, trip. And so this is where you can save your trip. So, of course, right here on the right, I have zero. But it also shows your average fuel consumption. And how I was writing previously, um, it has an instant economy average and then the average on one trip. So it's showing 20 gallons per hour. So pretty cool. And that's how it essentially calculates your fuel burn. Of course, it has your max speed which i guess i hit 47 i didn't know that i thought i just got to 40 um and my average speed was 11 and so that's why the the, the average economy of the fuel is going to be way off just because my average was 11 and my max was 47. these speakers are super loud going 40 miles an hour i can hear them loud the thing i didn't go over initially in my first ride review um is a pretty big one and um, would I use it all the time not really because I'm mostly an artificial fisherman but I do like to potentially keep fish alive um, if I don't have ice or whatever but it's used as a live well and check this out so down here below your handlebars you have this guy and this is your it's your live well setting so you have on and you can barely hear the pump turn on um, middle is off and down is timer and you can go through your settings on it turns on for like 30 seconds and then turns off for a minute and so it it goes in and out of filling your live well and you say well what do you use for a live well so let's go ahead and turn around cooler so you're going to use the cooler as your primary live well um, which is fine a lot of people would say well then you can't have a cooler well if you look where my feet are at you have another set of link things right here to attach either a smaller cooler um, and they actually sell link accessories online that you can put on anything so potentially I could use this as a live well and then still have a smaller cooler just for drinks and snacks right here you could use it for fuel anything else you could put a link attachment onto and also see do has accessories um, Going back to the live well, you have this spigot right here, and that is the live well output. And there's a hose that can quick connects to this and will quick to connect, connect to the back of the cooler. I don't have the cooler set up for the live well right now, but there's a stem that shoots water in here, and then there's a stem over here that lets water drain once it gets to a certain level. And so you'll always have fresh water flushing through it, clearing out, and keeping these fish or bait alive. 
Um, it's a good size. I mean, let's see what's a, so like a 26 inch width, which weirdly enough, that's the size of a keeper redfish. I don't know if I'm going to do this, but having a live well and because tournaments usually want to keep your fish alive, it would be pretty fun to try and enter into a redfish tournament and compete with some boats. Now, would I be competitive? Probably not, but especially with those tower boats. But it would be really, really cool to just show up and try to kind of show people that you don't need a $90,000 boat to get out there and catch fish in a tournament. Uh, I think for a bass tournament, this would be awesome. So food for thought. Since we're kind of at the back now, we're gonna look at the cooler. All right, so the cooler. Got rod holders, one, two, three, four, and you see these kind of angled guys. Well, what's cool is you can just reach right under these, and there's a little pull tab, and it literally just slides out, that easy. And you can then place them in these slots, and use it as a trolling setup. So you can have one angled outward, another one angled outward, and so it keeps your lines separated like you'd want. Um, I haven't, I still haven't put any rods on this yet, but I should do that really soon. Uh, the other cool thing about this top part, um, I know in the previous one it was like a foam. Um, this still is kind of foam, but it's thin and pretty hard. Also, there's drain rails, so if you do get water or anything, it doesn't turn into a pool, it just drains out. And then you have your, uh, you know, just like a rubber storage spot, which will be great for just a tackle box, something simple like that to keep back here. Uh, I could keep most tackle in the front, but if it was a really wet, rough day or something, you could always keep it back here, and then you know you're not opening your hatch and getting all your gear wet inside of your front hatch. Still regarding the cooler, I uh, want to show you guys the quick release system because when you have a cooler on a sea on previous generations before Fish Pros, you'd have to strap them down, do all this crazy stuff, and I feel like this isn't shown enough and it's really, really an awesome system that I think should be utilized across a plethora of things. Uh, I would love to have a quick detached cooler in the aluminum boat back here. But let me show you guys this system, how they have it set up. So it is attached using the link system. And so you just have these two little knobs. You lift, bring it in, lift, bring it in. And once that happens, let me put you guys on the tripod. So once you have it unlocked in the back, you can literally just lift it off. And you see that I haven't taken the cooler off yet because there's a blue strip, but simple as that. Underneath, there's just this little, those attachment points. Uh, you make sure your link latches are up. You set it on here. It'll drop in when it's right. Once it's locked, dropped in to those places, you do the opposite. You take those, you pull them over, boom, boom. Cooler's locked in. I think that is gonna be awesome. If I have fish in here, or even just drinks, I can easily detach it from the Fish Pro, bring it to wherever I need to, go fillet my fish, clean out the cooler, put it back on there, done. All right, and you guys probably ask, why get the trophy over the other Sea-Doo models? This back extension, which for me, having this whole extra space to have a cooler and store and lock in something else, pretty important. Um, the other thing is that I could stand up pretty easily back here and just fish. It's a pretty solid, big platform space. And I think it's just important to have extra space on a watercraft when most of the time when you're fishing, you have quite a bit of gear. So you're just already setting yourself up for success by having just a little more space. The other thing that sold me on the trophy was the live well function. Do I use it all the time? No, but you don't always just have to use it as a live well. You can use it as a hose. So you can connect it, 
Um, I do plan on going offshore on this a lot. That's a big pro of having a sea do is being able to go offshore and go get there fast and burn a little bit of fuel because everyone knows gas is so expensive now. It's going up like 10 cents a day. I don't know. I'm just glad I didn't buy a big offshore boat and then the gas prices do this because then I wouldn't be able to use it. But this baby, oh yeah, we gonna get on it. The other thing that really sold me is this. So there's two little push tabs right here. The seat pops off. Um, by the way, every component you see in this video will float if you drop it. So that's a, that's a big pro when you're over the water and you're taking things apart. <laughs> so you've got your back seat, you pull off. You can store this, which is gonna be your seat pedestal. You can either, they have some mount adaptions for the cooler to where you can store it back here. Uh, I currently just keep it in the front hatch because the front hatch is so huge. I mean, this is a pretty big piece of metal, uh, but it still doesn't even really take up room in there. So eventually I might mount it back here. I just have to feel it out, but I'm gonna show you guys how to set this in. Drop this in the back, whoop, upside down. So you drop this into the back and then you take your seat. There is a hole that's underneath it right there. Drop it in on there. And then up in the front hatch, you guys will see there was a headrest, not a headrest, there was a backrest in the main compartment. Boop. Drop that on. And you have a legitimate 360 swiveling fighting chair, essentially. Whenever you put this in, the Sea-Doo will beep, and that's because it'll limit you to 20 miles an hour when you have this up, which is good because if you had this up, you got in some crazy instant, like when you're out on the water and you're excited, you just do dumb things sometimes. The 360 swivel seat to me is an absolute game changer. Um, you can have a person driving, trolling, two rods in the back, and another person sitting here in like a fighting chair position. So you hook up while you're trolling, your person can grab your rod out of the holder, you're sitting there, you're controlling the sea dew, and depending on where the fish is running, if you need to slow, slow down, speed up, or just stop in general, you have a driver that can do it while you have a person in the fighting chair going to town, which, that's pretty cool. Do you need the backrest? No but it just gives you that extra stability and comfort of knowing that you have a back behind you and you're secure in this. So I'm gonna show you guys like a quick view of what it looks like of me sitting in it. That's pretty sweet. All right, so I'm just gonna hop in this guy just to show you guys like relative to my size, what this seat is. So I can sit totally comfortably with a nice back support. I feel comfortable. It's not, it's not sketchy in any way. Of course, I haven't done this on the water yet. I will, but um, you can have that person behind you driving and you can be prepared. You can put your feet up on the cooler, watching your rods. Um, same thing when you're fighting it, but you know, you grab your rod out and you're sitting here and you're fighting a fish. The other thing is if the water, for me, if the water's too rough to wanna just stand back here, which I'll probably do a lot, but if you're out at the jetties, and you got some rollers coming in, no one wants to fall off their boat. And with this being a smaller Sea-Doo, um, the chances are pretty high if you're just standing on the back of it. So this seat gives you a higher vantage point than sitting back here. Um, and you can just sit here and fish all day long. You don't have to worry about rollers coming in. If rollers come in, you're secure. And if a fish tries to run or goes do something crazy, I mean, you just turn this baby, boom, you're over here, you know, you're back to the back. And takedown is just as easy. I'll do it while sitting on the sea dew just to kind of show you guys. So you can get back over here, you sit on your seat, you know, you're safe, you wiggle it off. You disconnect the back, you disconnect your pole, lock that down. And these footwells are super deep, so you can just put your gear in there or your accessories while you're doing this. Clip it back in, 
put this back in your front hatch and this either on your cooler or in your front hatch and you're done. All right, and so I believe that pretty much covers the Sea-Doo Fish Pro Trophy Edition. And uh, pretty much the trailer is just the Sea-Doo brand Move trailer. It's all aluminum, has LED lights in the back. And um, pretty much it, just a simple aluminum trailer. Thank you guys for kind of going deep diving in the technicals of this thing. But while simple, I think that it is a really, really cool system that is user friendly and it'll just get you places that a lot of boats can't. So thank you guys for watching another episode of Kagan Fishing and I'll catch you next time.